Now that we ran our first successful deployment with Metric Beat, let's get ourselves familiar with the configuration options that are available. Let's start with the metricbeat.yaml file. As we've seen before, this was the file that we've set the options to for Metric Beat to connect with Elastic Cloud. However, this is actually the file that dictates most of the behavior found on Metric Beat. So let's recap the main options. First, there is this metric.config.modules that you can find in the beginning of the metricbeat.yaml file that basically specifies where Metric Beat is going to load all the modules that are enabled. And the path variable, as you can see here, it points to this modules.d folder that contains an array of YAML files. Those are the modules that come out of the box with Metric Beat. As you can see here, most of them are disabled, which means that although Metric Beat is going to load them up, they're not going to be actually executed. For a module to be executed, they have to be enabled. There is at least one module enabled out of the box with Metric Beat, and this module is called System. The System module is a module that collects metric sets from operating systems. And here you can see that the module System has been enabled and it is configured to retrieve every 10 seconds the following metric sets. CPU, load, memory, network, process, process summary, and socket summary. In the same module, we have the system module enabled one more time, but this time is configured to collect every minute the metric set, file system, and FS stat. Likely because this involves some I.O. execution and therefore it cannot be collected as frequently as the other modules. If you remember the discussion we had before, uh, it was said that you can actually enable the same module multiple times whether to create a different collection period or to enable a different set of metric sets. Hopefully, the discussion we had before, it would make a little more sense now that you can see what modules and metric set actually means. To enable a module, you can either rename the file manually here, or you can run a command using the metric beat executable. For example, to enable the Tomcat module, you can simply says metric beats, modules, enable, and then specify the unique name of the module. This will enable the Tomcat module, and therefore, by the time metric beat executes, it will load up the Tomcat and whatever has been specified in the Tomcat module configuration file. I am going to disable the Tomcat model because we're not going to use it at this time. Also in the metric beat configuration file, you can see that there are options for you to configure how the template of the indexes and the mappings for in each index will look like. The default configuration includes the setup.template.setting session where you can specify the number of shards and the codec for each index. However, you can actually specify a different set of fields for a given index that will be created. By default, Metric Beat will rely on whatever has been specified here on this file called fields.yaml. This is a file that was originally generated by ECS, Elastic Common Schema. Whatever fields you are going to see on Elasticsearch that comprises all the fields from uh, the index from Metric Beat, it will come from this file over here. Usually, you don't need to change anything and the fields that are specified here are going to be enough. However, if for some reason you need to change the type or set of fields that you want to be created on Elasticsearch, you can simply disable the template creation and use your own template. 
either specifying the name of the template or specifying the file that contains your definition of your template. Also in the metricbeat.yaml file, you've seen before that we've used the option setup.kibana and the Elastic Cloud option, but we haven't said that there is also some options for you to configure how MetricBeat is going to connect with different outputs. There are examples set here, for example, Elasticsearch, that specifies that by default is going to try to connect with a Elasticsearch instance running locally and under the port 92200. One thing to keep in mind is that outputs have to be unique. It means that either you are sending data to Elasticsearch or you are sending data to Logstash. If you enable one output, you have to necessarily disable the other. The only exception for this rule is whether you have enabled the Elastic Cloud options. As we mentioned before, Elastic Cloud takes precedence over the configuration. So regardless if you have, for example, output set to Elasticsearch here, if the metric beat found that you have enabled the cloud.id or the cloud.auth configuration, that would take precedence and metric beat will completely ignore whatever other output has been enabled. Another folder that is important for you to understand what it does is the logs and data folder. The logs folder, as it implies, it contains all the logs from the previous executions of your metric beat. Sometimes it is important to monitor this folder because you might incur into a situation where you want to troubleshoot what's going on with your metric gathering, processing, or shipment. We're going to show later some also techniques that you can use for troubleshooting purposes. The data folder contains the persistent file that metric beat creates every time it needs to execute the collection, parsing, and shipment of data. It's often used for reliability purposes, and we are going to cover this later. Finally, it is often a good practice to take a look in the metricbeat.reference.yaml file. This is a file that you are not going to use for anything other than to simply learn how to configure most of the modules. For example, what this file includes is a example of the different modules that come out of the box with metric beat and there will be a template or literally an example of how you could configure this module with the standard options. For example, and here we have the listing of the active MQ module and how you would configure ActiveMQ module to collect metrics from ActiveMQ. Same goes to Aerospike, same goes to Apache, and any other modules that are listed here. This is a handy way for you to actually learn how to work with the modules. But I highly encourage you, if you are in doubt about how a certain module works, just simply click on this URL here that is listed on the beginning of the file where you can see the list of modules available and in there you're going to see other examples and the explanation about the common options. In the sequence, let's take a look about the options that you can use with MetricBeat for testing, troubleshooting and configuration purposes.